Next guest is on a book tour promoting his new novel, Diablo. Mark Grissom is an author who calls Tennessee home. Crossville, I think, is home to you. Mark Grisham, your name sounds a little bit familiar. Yeah, there's a, another guy named Grisham, I think, has written a book or two. Out there. I think he has, yeah. <laughs> 34 of them, to be exact. He's uh, 32 books ahead of me, so i got some catching up to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, John Grisham, your brother, is a lawyer, and he writes about legal thrillers. Yes. You are a Civil War expert of sorts. Is that kind of driven your books and their themes? Well, it's just something I've always kind of been fascinated with was the Civil War era, uh, the, the war itself, the diplomacy behind the war, uh, why it didn't have to happen. But when you get that many politicians in the middle of something, they're going to screw it up sooner or later. So uh, that, that was a lot of the war. Uh, but just that, just always growing up in Memphis uh, along the Mississippi River, just kind of I love that part of the country and the history that goes with it. And I don't know, just got a crazy imagination. and. It's easy to come up with stories and start putting stories together, and all of a sudden you got a book there. So it's, uh, it's a lot. Is, of that, is that how it works in your family? <laughs> well, you just come up with does. crazy yeah. things, all of a sudden you got a book. Well, John's a planner. He, uh, when he writes a book, he plans everything he's going to say, every name, everything. I just start trying to think about something and try to put myself mentally back in that era where I'm thinking and what's going on and become one of the characters, and that's how I write. They call it city of, the, city of your pants writing is what yeah. I call it. So. What do you think folks will get out of this? Uh, just a little bit uh, more of an understanding, and, and it's, it's about uh, sex trafficking, too. A beautiful young woman is abducted and kind of sold down the river to some bad guys in New Orleans, and her husband goes looking for her. He really don't want to find her because he can't stand her, but he has to because <laughs> his mother-in-law gets the law after him, so he's got to clear his name. But uh, they end up in New Orleans, and uh, just a horrible, horrible uh, problem with sex, sex trafficking. It's always been a problem. And we talk about the opium abuse. Uh, opium was prominent back in those days. Interesting. The Chinese had brought it when they came over, from, uh, obviously from China, when they came to America. I even found a picture of a brass syringe one time on the Internet from the 1850s, and it was massive, and they were actually shooting up heroin that long ago. They would melt down the opium and shoot it up. So that's an aspect of the book. The bad guy uh, gets the, get, uh, kidnaps women, puts them into prostitution, and the way to keep them there is to get them hooked on drugs. Probably about the same thing that's going on sure. right now. Sure, so. yeah. So it's set before the world, the Civil War. How do you sort of weave in what's happening at that time with this story? Well, the Civil War is kind of rumbling in the background. The election of Lincoln is about to happen. And as, as this flatboat crew goes down the Mississippi River, searching towns all on both sides of the river, looking for this guy's wife, they get new news. Like one place they stop, I think, Vicksburg, and Lincoln's just been elected. Next time they stop, uh, South Carolina seceded. Next time they stop, uh, they bombed Fort Sumter and on and on and on. It's kind of the timeline I use at the war. It, it wraps up at the early part of 1861. There's really not anything going on. The Union Navy is patrolling the south, southern part of the Mississippi River, so they're around, but uh, nothing's really broke loose yet other than Fort Sumter. So. Did you enjoy writing this? I had a blast. I had a blast. I, like I said, I like to become a character and put myself back in that time and those situations. And what would I do? What, what, and that's kind of what my characters did. What, maybe what I would do, which probably isn't always right, but I mean, it's, it's, it's what they did, and they made a decision. and. Try to stick to it and see what happens there. So hope for the best and prepare for the worst, I guess. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun becoming those people and going back in time and just going, just checking out almost mentally for a while. It's a lot of fun. When people p have they may finish the book and they put it down, what do they? You hope they've come away with? I've had such great response. I've had people tell me that uh, they the last few chapters they stopped reading it because they didn't want to finish and they'd read a chapter or two and then read that and stop. Make what themselves a stop. Yeah. And one guy told me he said it's, he said. It's what I want in the book because he said, I, I'll, I'll read three or four chapters. I spend all the next day thinking about them. And I can't wait to get home to go home and read three or four more chapters. And he said, I did that. And he said, I absolutely love the book. So Man, reviews have been get, great. So, that's uh, huge. We've what got a, a movie deal. Uh, movie City Films out of Nashville is going to make a movie out of it. So that's exciting. Hopefully it'll happen this year. Uh, who knows? But uh, good things are happening there. So uh, Read the book before the movie comes out. That's what yeah. I yeah. always say. Well, the number one hobby of our viewers is, is reading. Where can folks get the book? MarkGrishamArthur.com. Check me out on the Internet. I'm shipping them out of my garage right now. We're kind of small, but uh, hopefully we expand and we'll need a few employees here someday. Hopefully, but uh, uh, give me a give me a check out our website. We got a really cool website. Uh, I'll sign them, personalize them, mail them right to your door, and uh, take care of you. So Thanks for driving over from Crossville. Have a safe drive back. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you guys. Just come back and see us when the new one's out. I, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I just threw a new one on you right there. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me off guard there because this was still new. It's only been out a few weeks. So. Oh, but, thank uh, you so much.